What's going on, everybody? I am back for November 20th, Monday's DFS slate. Um, we got 11 games again tonight, which I feel like is the only size slate that I've been doing lately. But let's just dive into it. Um, there's a lot of interesting stuff going on for tonight. Um, just off the bat, I expect Wall to be back, so nothing cool coming from the Wiz, but we'll get to everything else shortly. I'm going to jump off first game. Hornets and Timberwolves. Uh, Hornets have a 108 implied total, sixth on the night. Um, I think Kemba is in a pretty good spot. You know, the, the Timberwolves defense has been lackluster at best. So it's not like Jeff Teague is some crazy defender. You know, I'd be a little bit more worried if Rubio were still there, to be honest. But, you know, Kemba needs 41 and a half to hit 5x. Um, in his past four, you know, he's just he's been just under it a couple times, had the 60-point game, hit value on the 10th. So I think Kemba's worth at least a deeper look. Um, and more and more, I'm going to be um, taking a look at the stats on cleaning the glass and, you know, trying to get a, a better idea of how guys fit from a from a real true matchup perspective, especially guys that are revolving around points. Like, I want to make sure that, you know, Kemba's style is fitting against the Timberwolves' defensive style. Um, so if somebody has, like, a terrible projection right off the bat, they're not going to be something that I'm going to dive into much further because I think that they can only be pulled up so far. But if a guy has, using his just average numbers here, um, if he's going to project well, then I want to dig in a little bit further to see like how much upside is really there. So Kemba Walker is probably the, the best looking opportunity for that right off the bat. Um, and I like him on FanDuel and DK. And then after that... Like it's hard to to want to take Dwight just from a minutes thing, you know. I have him at twenty eight, or like Zeller is Zeller is so much better than twenty one minutes a night, but he might break if he plays much more than that. They've got a good thing going there. That's a really decent rotation. Um, I oddly like the Hornets. But I just wish they were like more interesting of a team. Just got all of these like. You know, B, B plus type dudes. That's probably, that's probably that's probably too high of a rating, but I don't know. It's just hard to get excited about them. Um, MKG at DK is kind of interesting. Thirty or forty one hundred. He's kind of just static. I mean, I know these are FanDuel points, but they're only going to be off by one or two, one way or the other. Um, I don't mind that price. I'm not too worried about anything on the Timberwolves D. Like, it's, it's not it's not that kind of game. Um, and they've got a really good implied total, but uh, nothing really, like really jumps off the page. I mean, I guess keep an eye. You know, Jeremy Lamb came out of his last game early, only played 22 minutes. Um, so if if there's any weird news on Jeremy Lamb being out, that could make you know, some of their other guys a little bit more interesting. But other than that, I'd probably only pay attention to Kemba. We'll head to Minnesota. Or every team, apparently. Uh, again, guys, 6.49 a.m. Sometimes you just, uh, motor skills aren't working. If I could put this coffee in an IV and not have to drink it while I'm doing this, it'd be a lot better. Okay, so numbers-wise, right off the bat, I want to take a look at Wiggins, who is at 6,200, which means he needs 31. That looks pretty good so far. He's cheaper on FanDuel than he is on DK, which is interesting. What has this price been doing? Why is this happening? Okay, there we go. I assume his price is cratered. That's the only reason I can understand this. No, it's only been down from like 65. Yeah, I like Wiggins tonight. Uh, I definitely want to look into him. And 
and then I mean really you know most of Minnesota is always going to be in play they got the 106 imply total it's 10th on the night so you know middle of the pack but the way Tibbs runs his team you know I'll, the only guys that show up on my filter here are like their five main guys they're all getting 30 plus minutes so like their prices are usually pretty normal but somebody's set up for something big I'd say this wouldn't be a town spot for me 47 and a half but like it's not not a town spot if that makes any sense I feel like there's going to be more value out there um, as I work my way through the slate so I don't see anything super interesting there and then Taj needs 25. I definitely want to look into Taj and take a look at um, the Hornets' rebounding rates. Because that'll be a little bit more important. Um, I'd like to see how that grades out for Taj. I'm okay on Teague and Butler tonight. It's going to be an interesting game. Um, there's a there's a lot of chances for guys to put up decent numbers here in a game that I feel like most people won't pay attention to. Pistons. I just I wish I could get a feel for the Pistons. I, maybe I need to just go back and like watch an archived game or two because I can't I can't put my finger on like where I, how I feel about them. It's, I'm so clouded by last year. Uh, 106 implied total, which is right now the exact same as the Timberwolves. Um, like I said, 10th. And if we're looking at people here, and this should be a really good spot for Drummond, right? Who stops Andre Drummond on the Cavs? Although, If Kevin Love has to deal with Andre Drummond, like he can put him into foul trouble. That's sneaky. That's something I'll have to look at. Um, but on the surface, Drummond looks amazing. And I'd like to take a look at Reggie Jackson. Um, probably not on DK, but for FanDuel for sure. He needs 31. I said it once in the past five. It's probably just not enough minutes for 6,200. Um, I would guess Avery Bradley would get a ton of burn tonight if he needed to. He's like the type of guy that's going to play extra minutes against the Cavs. You know, you want Bradley to get minutes if you're playing a, a highly offensive team. Bradley needs 30. Hit it twice in his last five. Yeah, it's one I'm going to dig into a little bit. Again, for like a lot of these games, they're prob I'm probably only going to end up with one of some, like, you know, one Hornet, one Timberwolf, one Timberwolf. That's a weird way to say it. Uh, you know, one Piston. There's too many games to be like stacking up too crazy here unless it's really good, you know, synergistic type stuff. Other than that, I don't see anything really... You know, I'm still trying to figure out Stanley Johnson's minutes coming back. What did he play in the last one? 25 in the last one. I've got him at 28 here. I don't I don't know what to make of him or the rest of this Piston squad. Just, I think Drummond and Bradley are probably the only two plays for, the, uh, for me tonight. Cavs. Should be interesting. LeBron and nobody? Let me guess. LeBron at 11-6, but I should just leave his name on here. Like, it's pretty hard to be like, you know, LeBron James isn't in play, especially for cash. Like, they got a 108-5 implied total, fourth for the night, which is awesome. Man, if Wade gets 37 minutes, you for sure need to roster him at 
6,200 on FanDuel or 5,100 on DK. Yeah, Dwayne Wade on DK tonight. Point guard and shooting guard, 5,100. You know, Rose is out. Shumpert's out. I mean, wait. I've got Wade at 26 minutes. It's just 11 less than he played in the last one. But even if he plays 26 minutes, he should be able to get clo pretty close to value, if not over value on DK. So I'm not adding him to my short list. So I hope you're listening. The reason he's not on my short like I'm not, probably not going to play him on FanDuel, and I don't really play on DK. But if you're on DK, you want to uh, take a look at Dwayne Wade tonight. And Kevin Love, 7,500. He needs 37 and a half. Which he's done four out of his last six. With a couple of those being well over 38, 45, 53, 62. I guess I need to take a look at Kevin Love. I just don't get this Cavs team. I really don't. Why is he, when did Jay Crowder just become really bad? I know Celtics fans are going to be like, a, a year and a half ago. But I thought he was the, the linchpin of this trade. Just a guy to, you know, soften Braun's defensive woes during the regular season. Just let Braun, you know, chill, hunt blocks and steals and stuff. But, oh my God, Crowder's been a, just dreadful. Um, I mean, J.R. Smith, and if the Pistons match up defensively and for, like, shooting threes, then take a look at J.R. Smith for GPPs. Let's throw away line so I can splice that in somewhere down the line if uh, it looks good. Two games I got through in the first 15 minutes, so that's a hell of a pace. Let's pick it up. There's some games down here that aren't going to matter much. Let's look at the Magic. Is one of them that, even though they have a good implied total, I don't really know what to do with them tonight. Magic, 111.5 implied total. That is first. Is that right? Did I enter that in right? Right now, there's no line on the Wizards uh, Bucks game. I put a fake line in there, assuming Wall plays. So these projections are almost perfectly accurate for uh, what I need. Uh, Indiana Orlando, my Orlando minus three, two twenty. Yeah, holy shit. Okay. Well, you'll see that they're not priced very well on DK. That's a lot of uh, ugly colors. So I think we're paying attention to only FanDuel for the most part. Man, Evan Fournier really cooled off. I guess he's probably not going to keep shooting like 55% from three. Shocked. Um, against the Pacers. How is it possible... Well, here's how it's possible. So they ran out 12 dudes in their last one. Minutes are thinner. Number one projected points tonight, and I don't like any of it. Which leads me to believe I'm wrong. <laughs> um, I don't particularly love Vooch against Miles Turner, especially the way that he's been playing this year. You know, trying to step out, knock out threes. Turner's just like a better version of that. So, I don't know. Um, I mean, I guess he deserves a, a little bit of a look. I mean, he's 38 to hit 5x. Ha hasn't done it since November 8th. I'm going to pass. Probably the spot where he'll end up doing it. Jonathan Simmons needs 23 and a half right around there he might be an okay look I don't expect it but as you guys know small forward is 
a wasteland and all you need to do is just try to figure out how to find two dudes that don't suck or you know pay up for brawn and somebody and just punt everywhere else yeah I don't leave any notes in the comments if you have thoughts on Orlando because I'm not seeing it and that concerns me because I feel like I should be. But they just, they're not like a sexy fantasy team. Like, I like Aaron Gordon a lot. But, you know, he's put up less than 30 in four straight. And almost five of six. So, I don't, what are you supposed to do with that? Pacers, on the other hand, 108.5 implied total, fourth on the night. Um, I've got Miles Turner at 30 minutes, which is interesting because he hasn't done that yet. At least I don't think. Maybe once. Yeah, 33 two nights ago, or however many nights ago that, that is. Oh, I had 35. No, first range back. As you can tell. I don't pay too much attention to the Pacers because they're not good. And the only reason they were interesting at any point in time this year was because Miles Turner was out and Sabonis was playing 35 minutes a game. Turner needs 37 and a half. I, it's just a good, it's a good play. For, it's like he's in a good spot for it just because of the pace of this game. I always get Collison and Oladipo wrong, so that's. That's going to make me second guess a bunch of junk. Carlson is a lot cheaper on FanDuel than he is on DK, though. Twenty-eight and a half. Yeah, I like. I'm going to take a deeper look at Darren Collison, and then um, I don't know. I don't see it for Oladipo. That's a pretty, well, he's 39 and a half, and he's done it in three of his last four. At the very least, I need to look at his profile. God, I'm gonna, so, like, apparently I just like the Pacers. <laughs> I don't trust Miles Turner. I don't ever trust Thad Young. But he always looks great on paper. That's it for me on Pacers. Um, I'll mention this again at the end, but I will do a, a live video tonight. So whatever I'm entering here in the short list, you'll be able to see what like the end product, product is for some of my uh, research. And that, I'll... If, let's see, game started. So yeah, so I'll I'll be signed on around six o'clock, um, maybe a little earlier. As long as traffic isn't as crazy as it was when I was coming home on Friday for a uh, video before lock, it'll be fun. Sixers one hundred nine point five second highest implied total. They've got the Jazz, no Rudy Gobert, and oh my God, is Embiid set up to just wreck the jazz it would have been a it's a shame like i mean i don't think there's anybody out there that really doesn't like rudy gobert this is a it's a shame that he's not healthy for this because seeing Embiid and gobert go at it would have been fun um i mentioned on like I, I, don't, I don't like pointing out stuff like this but i mentioned on friday i really like simmons i didn't think Embiid was in a really good spot Simmons profile is, you know, a lot of mid-range stuff, which fit into, um, you know, Golden State's going to give up all the mid-range crap you want. So I thought that looked good for him. He ended up putting up 52, so, which is like, you know, probably a little bit less than value, but still, uh, Embiid probably sunk a bundle of people on Friday. It is Friday, right? Friday or Saturday. Whatever. I didn't play Saturday or Sunday. Saturday, stuff to do with the wife. Sunday, I hate the spread out schedule on Sundays. I don't even care about football either. That's the craziest part. 
Okay, Sixers, we're going to need some parts here. Um, I, I can't write down Joel Embiid fast enough. Home game jazz. And he's just going to have to, he's just going to style on favors, I think. Simmons to get to 50. Uh, yeah, I, they both need deep, deep looks. And then... I wish Covington's price was a little different, but 68 is... That's a lot of... It's a lot of dollars. The problem with Covington is, like, he can have a really good game as a basketball player and put up, you know, 21.7, which is like a fully functional game, but he doesn't need to be relied on for the offense. Like, he could just be out grinding on D and might just not be his night offensively. And that th Those are situations where it gets really tricky. Um... I don't really see anything else other than that. I guess Sarich on DK is is definitely worth looking into. Does he put up any major stinkers? Yeah, 11.6. Other than that, yeah, if you're on DK, you want to take a look at Sarich. For sure. And everything else that I just said. Then we'll go to the Jazz, which I imagine is going to be absolutely no one. Donovan Mitchell, 66. What has this price done since he's been playing kind of crazy lately? So he's just been rising and rising and rising. Man, like, if he, he's... He's just not... I can't do 66 right now, I don't think. Not with Rubio back. He's even more expensive on DK. I think he's 33 to hit value. I feel like he's going to have to work for that. I don't think I like any part of the Jazz. 102.5, 15, like tied for 15th and implied total. I just, ugh. Wait, what's the upside here? Unless Rubio ends up sitting again, I don't, there's, there's nothing here for me for the Jazz. Move to the Knicks. I wish the Knicks were good. I just wish like Dolan would sell the team. You just build on like a Frankie Smokes, Porzingis, like, crazy core moving forward. Oh, this is an ugly game too. Knicks Clippers. Knicks 105.25 implied total. 13th on the night. Clippers are right behind them at 14th. So. Um, there's probably not a ton of interesting junk going on here, especially for the Knicks. Um, I'm assuming Tim Hardaway plays. I know he got dinged up. Or on the Clippers. Yeah, I like, I like Porzingis. Definitely want to dig in there. Other than that, I'm good on the Knicks. Hardaway needs 33 and a half. He's been playing pretty well lately. I have been disregarding him because he was uh, trash to start the season. Just utter, utter trash. But I need to get that mental block out of my head. But again, this isn't the spot. It's just a mid-tier throwaway game. I mean, he could go off, but not my focus. Clippers. Beverly is back in my projections. Um, so all you uh, Thornwell fans, probably not going to be able to fire him up tonight. Kidding. Um, so yeah, I, I think I like Blake. What do the Knicks do to stop him? I mean, it's just Porzingis, right? It's 
43 and a half. I got I to give Blake Griffin more credit sometimes. And then let's see, DeAndre. He should feast, right? Like what? Like if he gets 20 minutes against Cantor, shouldn't he just destroy him? Right? Yeah. That's a great spot for DeAndre Jordan. Unless I'm just crazy. Like, I would guess that the Knicks aren't the best shooting team, so that should open up, you know, rebounding opportunities. And then he's going to have Enos Cantor for a lot of the game, and Cantor is just atrocious on defense. Could be, could be interesting for him. I like it. Uh, Lou Williams, down to 6,000. Uh, he was 7,700 earlier, a couple days ago, which was bonkers. 6,000 is where Lou Williams belongs. He's a $6,000 player. Means he needs 30. And if Beverly's back, I'm not trying to figure that out today. So that's it for me for Clippers. Grizzlies Blazers. As you can see, I'm wearing a Blazers shirt right now. Doesn't mean I'm a Blazers fan, just love the shirt. But this game sucks. Grizzlies, 96.5 implied total. That is 21st on the day. Oh boy, is this ugly. I don't even know why I'm typing this in. Um, yeah, so I'm going to write down Marcus Gasol because if Mike Conley is out, you mark Conley. I... <laughs> if only, guys. Again, 7.13 a.m. It's too early for this crap. If Conley's out, you have to at least look at Marc Gasol. This is a terrible game. Um, so all of the stars need to align for me to actually want to put Gasol in. But he is the only thing that's good in this entire section. Tyreek Evans is a little banged up, so if he's out... Um, some of the trash at the end of the bench of the Grizzlies is probably in play, I guess. Or like James Ennis or something. I don't know. Just keep an eye on Tyreek Evans' news. Uh, Chalmers is up to 5,400 right now. Don't go anywhere near that. He, anything over 4,000 is just ludicrous for him. I don't care that he put up 31.8 fantasy points in 29 minutes. He's, he's Mario Chalmers. He's not... Don't pay $5,400 for Mario Chalmers. That's all I gotta say. Uh, especially in this game. It just, that's it. I'm, I'm not, I can't look at any other Grizzlies. If new injury news opens them up, great. But they've got a garbage implied total. It makes me sad to even go and look at Portland too because they are not in the best spot. This is, we just need, I don't like, any of you guys want to take like a break tonight? Just uh, you know, take a take a DMP, rest a rest a quad, open something up because this is just like you can't. Turner's projected for 22 minutes. I guess Mo Harkless is worth like a peak, and then you go back and look and th see that he put up four fantasy points in 16 minutes, and you're like, or 19 minutes, and you're like, no, he's not worth anything. Um, even like. Lillard and McCollum's. I'm, do I have this typed in right? It's so bad. Is it 194? It is. Okay. It's it's such a bad projection for Lillard and McCollum that I honestly figured I just fat fingered something. Um. Lillard needs 46, McCollum needs 35. I'm willing to take a look deeper at CJ, but I'd be shocked. I can't see how I get to Lillard tonight, especially when there's 22 teams playing. You gotta feel it for some people, and I don't feel it for Dame. Maybe on DK where he's, you know, 
nine hundred dollars cheaper, but I don't I don't like any of this stuff. And then Nurkic needs thirty six and a half to hit value. He didn't even hit it and he played well in the last one. Hasn't hit it in the last six. Goodbye game. Alright, Bucks Wizards. Like I said before, um this line has not been posted yet. I put it in there as what do I have? Bucks f favored by three. I don't know. I pulled it off of like number fire or something because I just wanted to put numbers in there. I don't trust it, but it's going to be pretty close to these totals for each team. Either way, it's going to be mid tier um, totals. So Bucks 105 5 right now, it's 12th. Um, so they're going to be in the middle of the pack for game score type stuff. Um, so Milwaukee should look like this. Uh, not, nothing should really change there outside of just thinking about the way the guard rotation would work if Wall isn't in. But everything I understand about it says Wall will be playing. Um, Bledsoe, 63, needs 30 and change. I don't know. I'm still trying to get a feel for them. This is another team. Maybe I'm going to sit down tonight and just watch some old Bucks games with over with Bledsoe over the past couple games. Try to get a feel for it. Middleton at 71. You're basically betting on the threes. You're either getting just so like there's a really good example. So his average, you know, he need he needs 35 to hit 5x. I've got him projected at 31, which let's just say is basically like his average projection. Makes sense, you know, low 20s because he's gonna shoot like two for 11 from three or something stupid, and then when those land, it's 50 burgers. So I just I don't think it. I mean, they could land tonight, but. I don't see a terrible large amount of upside there, so I'm going to ignore everything. I would. This is a good spot for Giannis. I wonder what his history against the Jazz is. At least with the Jazz, if you're looking back, um, it's like the same team every year. So, Giannis against the Jazz, or against the Wiz. Have I been saying Jazz? Whatever. Cool. Didn't play that one. Awesome. 47 as 10-6, 38 minutes. 47. No duds. That's all that really matters. Giannis Ante to Kunpo. Oh, even though I was reading it, I don't normally get it on the first try. Um, other than that, there's nothing else there. Um, unless you're like a real big Tony Snell fan, but I doubt you are. Wizards. And Here's my first request. This is this is going to be a random 30 second rant. Can the Wizards go back to being the Bullets? Been a basketball fan for as long as I can remember. 26 years. And I have never been dumber trying to remember who's on a team than comparing the Wizards and the Magic. Cuz it's like the same blue-ish color scheme they both deal in like sorcery and for some reason I put Vooch on the Wizards in my head always. I put Gortat as the center of the magic always. It's just, I, I do it constantly. I've probably said it in a video. Um, and I think it's because Vooch is better than Gortat and I just assume that he's on the Wizards because the Wizards are better and it's if I just get it wrong. Like, just always. It's it's such a weird thing. I need them to go back to being the Bullets so that 
I could like recalibrate my brain and they're not both like magic E teams. I know like obviously magic have magic in their title, but anyway, that's it. 30 seconds, I hope. Wizards, um, I, I don't want any part of wall. Um, just, I don't really like playing guys coming off an injury like that, unless, especially on a big slate. That's uh, that's how you win a GPP, but that's not what I'm looking for in cash. I can't imagine he's going to be terribly highly owned in cash, so that's that just scares me. Um, Bradley Beal, on the other hand, I can get interested in. It's 39, which is what he put up. He had, uh, I know I, I talked, I had him on Friday and talked about him. Um, he was not playing well to start and had a crap game going into halftime and I thought he was sinking me and he ended up coming back and putting up 39.9, which was huge. Just got me back to where I needed to be. I'll take a look at him again. I really like Bradley Beal. I wish that <laughs> it's really hard rostering one of him and Wall when you're like casually watching a Wizards game. They both have like short name, like you know, four letter names on the back of their jersey. Sometimes I can never tell who I took. Not good with the Wizards. Gortat, 4,600. Needs 23. Yeah, I like that. I want to look at that. I think Gortok could be an interesting cash punt at center to open up some other stuff. All right, I need to kick this into high gear. Okay, Pelicans, Thunder, uh, Pelicans, 106 implied total, 10th on the night. Um, it should come as no surprise. You're only looking at maybe four guys here. Um, Holiday, Rondo, Davis, and Cousins. Davis coming back off of the pseudo concussion, which apparently he didn't have. Right. Anyway... Ah, this is a tricky game because the Thunders have the ability to be really tough on defense. I don't think that I'm in any position to take Holiday now with Rondo getting the full increase of minutes. I've got him at 26 tonight. He could easily go higher than that. So really what we're thinking would be what do we like more, Boogie or Davis? I don't think I like any of it. I think I'd like Davis, if anything. I guess Cousins would get more minutes against Steven Adams, which I don't really like. I don't think either of these guys are in a particularly great spot. One of them should do pretty well, but that's a big roll of the dice in a spot that's not the best. Like, I'd much rather step down to, like, Blake at power forward. I don't, or, like, DeAndre at center, I like a lot more than rolling the dice with Cousins here. So uh, right now, neither of these guys are hitting my shortlist, which is probably an interesting take that I'll have to look at a little bit further. Let's check out Oklahoma City, because huh? right now I'm not touching the Pelicans. OKC's got the 108.5 implied total. Um, that is fourth on the night. So... Obviously, just you can see that's just in two and a half points. There's a drop from fourth to tenth. So, a lot of people congregated here in the beginning sections, which is all the early seven o'clock games. Um, now, for the Thunder, I 
think I like Russell Westbrook. He needs 50 for value, which he hasn't done in his last six. You know, he's close. But against the Pelicans, good total. I uh, don't give a single shit about Rondo's defense anymore. This is in 2008. So I think Russell Westbrook is in a really tasty spot. And then, God, Paul George plays so many minutes now. 42 and a half fantasy points to hit 5x, which he has done twice in his last six. He got pretty close to that in his last game. Is he going to be, who, who will he be guarding? Like rotating on AD, I'm gonna look at it. I don't know enough. I don't, that one confuses me. I don't want Mellow at all, like at all, at all. And then Stephen Adams, 31, just coming back. Uh, no thanks. It's a good like. Uh, no. Can't do it. Westbrook's my man here. And that's probably FanDuel only. Single eligibility on DK and 10-5 is a tough pill to swallow. Let's go to the Mavs, who uh, I think I'm going to be able to skip over almost immediately. Ninety-four point five implied total uh, against the Celtics. They are gigantic dogs at home, and they have the worst projected point total of the night. I think that against a, an exceptional defense, I think that the only real realistic person you could be looking at would be either Dennis Smith or Yogi Ferrell. Um, Smith at Needs 31 and a half to hit value. He's done it two out of his last six, but they're also the two oldest. Um, he got pretty close on the one, 31 2. I don't hate the idea of taking Dennis. Well, look, I, I hate the idea of taking anybody on Dallas right now because they're not very good and they have the worst implied total. But, like, from a minutes perspective, you, you know, Yogi Farrell's going to get 30 minutes. He needs to hit 20 to hit 5x. Like, that's in play. There's not a lot of upside there. Just don't take anybody on Dallas. It's easier to just completely strike through that game. Celtics, on the other hand, probably not that interesting either. Uh, blowout potential is in play. They have a 102 implied total, which is 17th on the night. Just nothing super interesting. I will say this. The minutes will be tricky because of just the Celtics being that much better than the Mavs and the Mavs having nothing to play for. Kyrie needs 42 and a half to hit value. Um, and Dennis Smith Jr. isn't uh, any good on defense. So I think that Kyrie has to be someone you look at. Uh, Rozier might be a decent looking um, GPP settings. And then Horford against the centers of Dallas. Holy hell. What is Dirk supposed to... Like, if Dirk has to guard Al Horford for 10 minutes, what the hell is he supposed to do? The amount of footwork that Al Horford uses, it would tie Dirk in a pretzel at this point. Oh, it's so sad. Uh, so Horford needs 36. Um... I want to see if that if that matches up like perfectly. I'd like to know it. Um, other than that, I think I'm good in this game. Like I could see myself ending up with Jalen Brown as my last small forward because I can't ever fill this position. Um, but that's not something I'm going to look at until closer to lock when values come out. They don't jump off the page, so that's why I'm not why I'm not that interested. Spurs. You 
These 11 game slates, man. I take too long going through this nonsense. I think Kyle Anderson deserves a look. He's like 26, right? 26 to hit value. Hit it in this last one. Hit 30. Another 26. Another 30. Eighth implied total, but again, this is a small forward where uh, any little bit will help. And then Aldridge needs 43. He's cooled off and has passed two. The Hawks are uh, not good, so Marcus Aldridge at least gets a tiny look. Um, Kyle Anderson's got that point guard small forward eligibility. He's got that Ben Simmons look to him. It's worth a look on DK just because of it. But that's it for the Spurs. I mean, nope. Look, this game, it's going to be great for uh, people who like Spurs culture. Spurs and Hawks. But well, it's not going to be good from like a anything else perspective. So much red. Hawks 96.75 implied total 20th on the night. If you like anything here, you're probably crazy. Although Schroeder on DK is a very reasonable 6300 for someone that is a solid starter in the league. Needs 35 to hit value for FanDuel. I'd, I don't see a situation where I end up with him, but I can't disregard him right out of the gate. Um, other than that, nobody's really getting huge minutes. I'm not taking Terrain Prince on a 11 game slate and all this stuff. You know, like John Collins could end up playing 35 minutes because they get their asses blown out, but I'm good. Last game, Kings. Um, so I've been saying. In my past couple videos, don't roster anybody on the Kings. For the most part, that still holds true. 100 points implied 18th on the night. They have been giving bigger minutes out lately. So for a stretch when I was just like, don't play anybody, they were mid-20s, you know, playing 11 guys, and that's never going to get you anywhere. But if George Hill's going to play upwards of 30 minutes and Willie Colley Stein's going to play upwards of 30 minutes, you might be able to catch them before their prices really restabilize at those levels. That said, um, they're still not very good, which is the tricky part of it all. Uh, I don't want Zebo. The only and I still haven't fully cat like I haven't pushed their minutes up into the 30s yet because I they could just as easily not do that and rotate back the other way. Um, so George Hill needs 22 and a half to hit value. He's 4,500 on Fanduel. He's been right there in his past four. Nuggets aren't exactly locking anybody down in the backcourt, so I will look at George Hill. I will do a cursory glance at least, and that'll be it. Willie Cauley Stein is 5,300. He needs 26 and a half. He's gone well over that in his last two, and those have been the increased minutes. So I am going to take a look at him. It'll be even more interesting if Paul Millsap is out. Right now I'm projecting him in, but he is, I believe, questionable. So it's worth a look. Um, but I think that taking a look at Hill and Willie Cauley-Stein, they're not horrible options to fit in. And then finally we've got the Nuggets. Um, like I said, Millsap, I believe, is questionable. I still have him in, but I'm not going to roster him. Let's take a look at Jokic, who needs 46 and a half. He has, he's done it twice in his last five, and both of those were smashing that value. But at the same time, he's also put up 27 9. So a lot of range of outcomes there. They have the seventh highest implied total, so I'll take a look at it. But I'm pretty sure I like DeAndre for his price more than I'd like Jokic there. And then Jamal Murray needs 28, which he clobbered the last time out. 
and has clobbered twice in the last five, but the other three are not the same sort of situation. Um, I'm not even going to dig into them too much. Will Barton at 58. Stinker in the last one. Needs 29. Has done it. Two out of the last five. Almost three. I want to look at the game structure for Will Barton. Yeah. So I think that's a pretty good short list. I would expect, barring any news, that I have at least like six of those guys, five or six, probably six of those guys at the minimum in my lineup. And then, you know, filling in the mid-tier value at probably shooting guard and small forward like it is every other night for myself. Um, but that's it, I think. Uh, it's a weird slate in that there are a bunch of games that look pretty good on paper. But injury news is going to be a big time player tonight. And I think the live feed will be interesting um, because if something opens up, there's going to be a lot of opportunities to stack some highly, like some high price guys in really good games. I like it. It's going to be a fun Monday slate. That's it for me. Please like this if you like this like it if you don't uh subscribe if you can that would be the most important thing to me still trying to slowly but surely grind up to that thousand subscribers or 25 percent way of the way there right now um, i would love to be able to do that at some point in time that's going to be that's that's the milestone i'm shooting for um i will be back tonight around six o'clock for the hour before lock so we can go live you guys can watch me build um, my final lineup. Um, if you have any questions for me, uh, hit me up here in the comments on Twitter, on the DFS Reddit, wherever you want to try to find me, you can find me. Um, link to the projections are in the description, along with a link to my website, which will also have the link to the projections. But other than that, that's all I've got for you. Uh, good luck tonight.